Three, two, one. All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody, and welcome back to the home studio. Today, we have a video brought to you by Edelkrone. As you might know, if you've seen my videos in the past, I use tons of Edelkrone products. I'm a longtime customer. Now, Edelkrone does have a couple of exciting new products that I am super pumped to use throughout this year for all of my client work. We've got the new Pan Pro and the Edelkrone controller. Now, the new Pan Pro works seamlessly within the existing Edelkrone ecosystem. So if you've already got some Edelkrone products, you can pair those up and they will work together to get you those beautiful shots. You can use the Pan Pro with target mode so when you're using it with your Jib 1 or Slider Plus, you can keep your camera locked onto your subject. The Pan Pro also has a very impressive 30 pounds carrying capacity, so if you're using bigger cinema cameras, you're not gonna have an issue there. Conveniently, we've also got full hand control ability, and if you're really going for the ultimate motion control system, you can pair the Pan Pro with the Jib 1 and the Head Plus. Now we are gonna get a taste of that setup a little bit later into this video, but for now, let's talk about some ways to instantly make your product videos better. Now over here, we've got a product on the table. I'm not affiliated with this brand in any way, but this is gonna be our subject for this tutorial. You can see this is a pretty boring and basic shot. So I've got a blanket over here. This is actually Sarah's blanket. Thanks for letting me steal this. Uh, I'm constantly stealing your stuff. So sorry, not sorry. I'm gonna lay it down here, try get it nice and even. I'm gonna grab on either end of our blanket here and just kind of pull across. Now I think this has definitely achieved a more interesting or visually appealing looking frame, but it's not making the shot any better as far as the entertainment value. It's still a very boring and stagnant shot. So here are three ways you can make your shots less boring. Okay, so let's start off with movement of the lights. I think this is one of the more straightforward methods that anyone can do pretty easily. So what I've gone ahead and done is I took my other Aperture MC light and I taped it to a light cone. This will reflect the light around nicely and then I put diffusion on the end of it. A couple sprays to make the bottle look wet, maybe a little too wet. All right, now Sarah's gone ahead and turned off the room light over there. It's completely pitch black in here, but now we're gonna use this to rotate it around our product to create a little sort of dramatic effect. You wanna make sure you don't get the light in the shot. We'll do it one more time and I'd say that's pretty good. Now, as you can see, this is a much more dramatic version of the same shot. You can reveal labels this way. You can make something look a lot more moody. If you wanna spice up this shot a little bit more, you could, of course, add in a zoom in in post. This makes it a little bit more dynamic. And that's a great example of how, even if the camera's on a tripod and your subject is stationary, you can still create movement and interest in the shot by taking a light and moving it around your subject. So moving along to the second way we can make this shot look more dynamic, and that is to move the subject. Now, moving the subject subject isn't actually totally accurate because all you really want to accomplish is to move something in the frame. I'm going to create movement by using a ribbon. Okay, in three, two, one. And just like we did when we moved the light around the subject, we can also add movement in post by scaling in. And it's when you combine these movements together, you get something more dynamic. Now, ideally, it would be great to get movement in both the lights and in the subject and in the camera, but sometimes it's hard to do all three, but we're gonna get to that. Okay, so as you can see, we have ditched the tripod because now we're gonna be talking about camera movement. As an example here, I'm gonna get a shot handheld. All I'm gonna do is hit record, and I'm gonna make sure that our subject is nice and centered, and I'm gonna do a very casual articulation like this. We're gonna go back here and that should be pretty good. All we have to do is slow that down to 40% speed because again, we're shooting in 60 frames per second, maybe a touch of stabilization and this is what we get. Now, of course, getting shots handheld is great because it's super convenient, but the downfall of shooting things handheld is that you don't have your hands free to do other things. Now, right away when I took the Pan Pro out of the box, I noticed that it was very high quality and well-made. You've got a power button, a display so you can see how much battery life is remaining, a couple ports for things like wall power and time lapses, and most of all, the Pan Pro is extremely versatile and we can use it in a whole number of ways. So let's take a look at a few. So this setup right here, we've got our Pan Pro on top of the slider plus also for from Edelkrone. What we're gonna do for this first example is repeat that shot we got earlier where we take the light and move it around our subject, only this time we're gonna have the added benefit of camera motion. So right now I've got the Edelkrone app open on my smartphone and we're using the target mode. Now what target mode does is it essentially keeps your camera locked on the subject. So no matter where we are on the slider, we're always gonna have the Pan Pro maintaining the subject in the middle of the frame. All right, so I've got my camera set up in a similar position as the previous shot. I'm gonna give our bottle a quick spray, hit record on the camera, and we're gonna start our slide.
Now, if we take a look at those two shots side by side, comparing the one without camera movement to the one with, you can tell that the one with camera movement is a lot more captivating because we have this dynamic interaction between what the camera is doing and what the light is doing around our subject. Okay, so onto our next setup here. This is the Edelkrone Slider 1. It's a more compact version of their slider. And then we've got the Pan Pro on the table. And this time, instead of putting the camera on the Pan Pro, we're using the Pan Pro as a turntable for our product. The idea is as our camera comes in on the slider, we're gonna have our product rotating. And simultaneously, I'll be taking the ribbon and going around the product like that, just like we did in the previous shot. So I'm gonna hit record here, start our slide, and here we go. And once again, comparing these two shots, you can see that the one with the camera and product movement is more dynamic than the one with just the ribbon going around the bottle where it's completely stationary. All right, so our last setup here, and this is what we call the ultimate motion control setup. This is the Pan Pro with the Jib One and the Head Plus. Now with the Pan Pro in between the Jib and the tripod, not only can you go up and down, but now you have an extra range of motion to swing the jib back and forth, making your shots a whole lot more dynamic and opening up a ton of possibilities. I've got my new Edelkrone remote right here and to connect this with our system, what we're gonna do is go into the menu and hit pair and connect. And from here, we're gonna select all of the different modules that we want to connect the remote to. Once I've done that, I click the right button on the remote and it will instantly connect to all of our devices. So what we can actually do here is take our camera and pull it into our starting position and to set a key point, we hold down the number one button on the remote. Once we're happy with our first position, we just take our camera and move it to our end position. And when we're happy with that, we just hold down the number two. So I'll go ahead and hit record. Now that we're ready, I will hit number two on the controller and this will start our movement. Now look how crazy smooth that shot actually is. You can't really get a shot like this with a regular slider or a gimbal. And the best part is that to make it smooth, it's not like you have to use slow motion. You can leave that in regular speed and it looks like butter. And there you have it. Those are a few different ways that you can create movement in your shots to get more dynamic looking footage. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you to Edelkrone for sponsoring this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video.